Welcome to CBS Sports HQ, presented by Enterprise. Amanda Garrett, Chris Hassel, and we have been graced. Yes, we have. By the presence of Brady Quinn, Pete Prisco. Oh, I love Pete. Come on, it's more hey, Pete. He's getting ready for the Masters over here. That's oh, right. Yeah, you got your That's green right. I've got my jacket. green jacket. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are less than a month until the NFL draft, and Pete Prisco has decided. This is actually his article. Mock drafts actually mean something now. Before this. They were meaningless, and so you've decided to do it's one. It's PD come lately, all year, zero mock drafts, and now all of a sudden, bang, 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 you're going to do four in four weeks. Does a mock draft in September really mean anything when you have no idea what any team uh, has done? Are you going to tell Wilson's that to Ryan Wilson? Meaningless? Uh, no, I'm not calling it meaningless. I'm calling the mock drafts meaningless. They don't mean anything. Now they start to mean something, as much as a mock draft can mean something. But yeah, this is when you can really get an idea of what a team is looking for and where they're looking for. My favorite part about this is you he will even tell you this one does not mean anything even though he went through the exercise of doing it which one matters the most the one I do on draft day there you go did you, actually, actually, did you put a lot of effort into this one though like did you yes. sit down and actually go through and think about yes. it actually though the one that really matters is the ones the one I do when it's the who they should draft mock draft because that's the one that I versus think what you think they're gonna right. do well right. the, the most interesting thing here is that you've got JJ McCarthy going third to the Patriots over Drake May you have the Vikings trading up to four to get May. By the way, McCarthy going three to the Patriots would pay out five to one right now, plus 500. So, Pete, you got the Vikings trading up to four for May. Why do you have him slipping behind McCarthy, a guy who you've said you're not as high on as a lot of the people in the league? Correct. I am not. And But the, after being at the league meetings and talking to a bunch of people in the league and listening to Jim Harbaugh ra rave about the guy, I think there's a good chance he's going to go ahead of Drake May. Would I take him ahead of Drake May? Absolutely not. Would I take him in the first round? No. But leagues, this league <laughs> not is... Not even in the first round. Wow. Back end, maybe. But this league is starved for quarterbacks. I get it. I understand it. And I think there's going to be a real run on these quarterbacks. I think they go one, two, three, four. I really do. Well, that'd be historic. We've never seen that before in, in the first round of an NFL draft. I do think J.J. McCarthy is a first-round talent. And I think, you know, some of the things he was asked to do are NFL-level stuff, whether it's, you know, pre-snap, post-snap with what he's doing with the offense and, and run blocking and, and pass protection and even scheme-wise what he's being asked to do. All those things line up for him. I could see why New England or even Washington could be enamored with his skill set. The real question becomes, you know, if J.J. McCarthy goes number three, do you think this is a trade, because you do have this trade scenario, that Minnesota executes on draft day? Because I can tell you this much from the conversations I've had, I've had with people in the know, the Minnesota Vikings do like Drake May a lot. And that's how I'd see this playing out in your mock draft. McCarthy goes three, that might be a surprise to some people. And Minnesota, who's positioned themselves to trade up, executes that trade to number four with Arizona to go get a guy that they're really high on. Okay, that's true, but what happens if Drake May goes three, would the Vikings go up and go get J.J. McCarthy? That's the other part of the equation. Would they do that? And I still think they would. I think they're desperate to get a quarterback. I think they're going to make a move to go get a quarterback. Yeah, I think that's the bottom line is they put themselves in this position, unfortunately, with the Kirk Cousin deal not being able to work something out to bring him back. Now they find themselves somewhat desperate, unless they just view this year as a rebuilding year and they feel like they can find a, a Bo Nix, maybe a Michael Penix at some point, either later in the first round, right? And they don't trade up and they let someone fall to them? You know, look, when I look at J.J. McCarthy, by the way, if I, I'm going to clarify, yeah, I would take him to the back end of the first round. I'd be better off taking a guy like uh, Michael Pratt in the third round before I take J.J. McCarthy in the first round, in large part because I don't think the value is there for him. I don't. That's just my personal take on it. I've been wrong on quarterbacks before. I've been right on quarterbacks before. I'll be wrong and right again. This time, I just don't think J.J. McCarthy. Here's what I think happened in the league. One guy started talking about him and, and pumping him up. Then two went back and watched the tape. Then it became four. Then it became eight then it became 16 you know what they say that so maybe I'll go back and look and he's right and then that's the same way I think this is because they're so desperate for quarterbacks we're pushing them up the board I know you love them I, I know you I, do I disagree I think he's a first round talent I really do well why is May falling down the board because going into the season it was looked at Caleb Williams number one he, and May he, was he didn't be have good two. tape if you look at the four quarterbacks he's got going off the board May probably has the worst tape, and, and Michael Penix has better tape this year. Bo Nix has better From tape. From this year. From this past season, Drake May probably, of all the guys we looked at, 
probably had the least attractive tape. Now, granted, he wasn't working with as much, but you're talking about a Heisman Trophy winner that's part of it, a reigning Heisman Trophy winner in Caleb Williams, uh, who his tape is, is pretty phenomenal. It wasn't as good as two years ago, but still pretty good. And Michael Penix has as good as tape as anyone, but we're not talking about him. I mean, Bo Nix, too, he set the completion percentage record. So there's a lot you're of guys right about tape that. The tape, the, tape isn't, the tape this year wasn't great for Drake May. But the but supporting if you put cast Drake, wasn't either. If you put Drake May in Michigan's offense, he be, might be the first overall pick in the draft. No? It could be. Yeah, yeah sure. I mean, they got, they got so many players on that team. It's, it's When you look at that, 18 guys go to the combine, 18 guys might get drafted. That's a benefit for whoever played quarterback at Michigan. It's a big difference. So I, I think, look, Drake May is a better player in my mind than J.J. McCarthy is. A lot of people hoping Drake May is the 2022 version of himself. Brady mentioned we could see quarterbacks go one, two, three, four. That's where you have it in your mock draft here. Uh, we've seen it a couple times, I think, in Ryan Wilson's. We have the Chargers coming in at five. You have them taking Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, they need a receiver. They could potentially trade out of this and find another receiver they like a little further on. So why do you have them staying here at five? Well, just for this mock, I did. But in listening, and I wrote a column about uh, Jim Harbaugh the other day, and he was raving about the offensive line. Yep. And, and what is what is his calling card? It's always been physical on both sides of the ball. So it wouldn't shock me to see them go in that direction, maybe even move down and still get an offensive lineman. Like he said, this pick, if it goes one, two, three, four, this pick essentially becomes, the, uh, aside from the quarterbacks, the number one you know, pick in the draft, and that means you're going to have a market maybe for it. And I think he's trying to drum up the market, which is smart on his case. But if they stick there, then I think their, their choice would be between an offensive tackle and maybe even a wide receiver. Because look, at their wide receiver is their wide receiver group right now is the worst in the league. It's, that's not good, and clearly they need help in this department. Marvin Harrison Jr. would walk in and be their day one reliable receiver right away. If they didn't go receiver, what, who would be that next that tackle you'd be talking See, about? See, I would take all. Okay. And, and but here, all played left tackle, and I think they've got Slater there, so they can so use him at right, right tackle. tackle. He's and probably athletic enough to be able to switch over that side. But that makes a case for them trading back, and and then spending a draft pick on a right tackle later on, getting some more picks. Yeah, I, I think offensive line makes sense, but I, I also think that when you look at the receiving group, that group is bad right now. I mean, you're, you're, Quentin Johnson's the number one wide receiver on that team right now, and you, he was a disappointment. You've got Malik Neighbors one spot after Harrison. How close? were you to putting Malik Neighbors in that spot who just ran a sub 4 4 40 today at LSU's Pro Day as opposed to Marvin Harrison? Well, we've five. talked about this. Malik Neighbors is my number one wide receiver. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> but you have the charges taking him. Because I just think they want this kind of wide receiver. They, want the, they don't want the shiftier one. But they've they got to, that in Quentin Johnson. He's a bigger body, bigger yeah, frame. I think they want this guy, though. That's okay. just my hunch. So, he, But he's not your number it's one. It's not you what I would do, you, Brady. It's you, what they would kind of do. Hedge? We're trying to guess what they if would this do. this was what your mod, draft, your I think they should do. This is what, no, if this was a... What I think they should do, they should take. Do you have Malik. the I think they should do it's coming not done up? Yet. That comes in a couple weeks. That's 4.0. Yeah, you Come got on, read, <laughs> read the column, Chris. Patience, read the column. Patience. Four mocks in four weeks yeah, coming up. I, I would take neighbors. Game. I'll be honest with you. I would take neighbors. <laughs> But not in, the, not in your own mock draft. Not, I wouldn't take J.J. McCarthy number three, but I have him going three. Okay. Uh, Chargers, no more Keenan Allen, no more Mike Williams. He's with the Jets. They have recent Rookie of the Year offensively in Garrett Wilson. Why do you think Roma Dunze would look really good with the Jets? Because they need to get another weapon with him. Um, I, I think that's when you look at their offense, they're, this is their year. Aaron Rodgers, you don't know how long he's going to play. They need to get another weapon. I think the offensive line, they made moves to get you know Tyron Smith. That's going to solidify the offensive line, um, at least for a year. And, and so when you solidify the offensive line for a year, you're all in. Go get a receiver to help out. I think a dude's would make sense. See, I think you'd look at it from the Jets' perspective in both ways, with, with the tackle position and wide receiver. Because they do bring in Mike Williams to help, but he's also on a one-year deal. He's dealt with injuries. So it would make some sense to bring in Roma Dunze. You could probably make some sense here, though, to go with the tackle. And at this spot in this draft, for you, Olu Fashionu would be available and maybe would make some sense because you do have Tyron Smith who's dealt with uh, injury issues only for a year as well. So I think either one of those players' positions makes a lot of sense for the Jets here. Yeah, it just depends on what Aaron Rodgers decides to do as a general manager of the team. <laughs> it's up to him. He'll pick. He'll make the pick. And with the, you know, with the pick, the Jets will rush it up and Aaron Rodgers will be the one who claps and makes the pick.
You, you don't really think? I mean, he's making the decision. Is he the GM of the team or the VP of the team? He's all, he's all of it. It's his team right now. Do, he does what he wants. He does our GM and VP, if you didn't know that. Uh, you mentioned the league meetings. Sean Payton came out and said it would be, quote, realistic for the Broncos to trade up right now. They're sitting at 12. In your mock draft, you do have them staying at 12, uh, taking Brock Bowers. So why take Brock Bowers here? And do you think we could eventually see them trade up to try to get a quarterback? I think they have their eye on J.J. McCarthy as well. I think they're one of the teams in the mix to try and make a move if, the, if that's available at that spot because they need a quarterback. And he said, he told us at the Super Bowl, he's going to get a, a rookie quarterback, he's going to get a veteran quarterback. So I, I think they're going to go make a move to get a quarterback. And if they can get up there and get J.J. McCarthy, I think they might do that. If they're stuck there, they need weapons. I mean, they, you, you need a tight end. It's going to be a playmaker. And Brock Bowers is a heck of a playmaker, even if he doesn't look like he is when he's standing around. Uh, he, he's one of those guys that plays better than he looks. I think he's going to be an instant impact player as a tight end in the NFL. I was going to ask you, is this too high to draft a tight end in this spot? You, just, you think it's that good? I do. In my book, it's probably a little too high, but I think he's going to be special. And I think when you look at the at the Broncos, they can go in a diff bunch of different directions if they don't go quarterback. They, they, uh, so and here's the other that, thing. That, that they don't be, have a lot of picks for the, to no, go make so, moves. So that would be my next question because they don't. Would you see them maybe overdrafting and taking a Bo Nix, taking a Michael Penix in the spot? I think Nix makes a lot of sense for Sean Payton's style and scheme. You look at Breeze, how you know, successful he was with accuracy, short, you know, underneath passing. That was kind of Bo Nix towards the end of his time to at Oregon. Um, would it make some sense there maybe over, overdrafting one of these quarterbacks? Yeah, I wouldn't, but it's entirely possible because if you don't have one, you know, Brady, you got to do everything you can to, to kind of solve the position. So it wouldn't shock me to see him overdraft one of those guys in that spot. You give up a lot of value when you move up in oh, the draft man. to get a quarterback. Broncos used a top 20 pick on a tight end just five years ago. That didn't work out with Noah fan who they traded. Uh, Xavier Worthy, another wide receiver this this guy is fast but he's not very big you got him going 27th to the Cardinals how do you weigh what he can do with his feet with how big his frame is well I, look you you watch a bunch of Texas football this kid can fly and, and I think he's a big play threat and the bottom line is you look at their re we talk about the Chargers receiver group the Cardinals receiver group isn't great either and they need to get weapons uh, they got rid of Marquise Brown he's out now you need another one to step in I think worthy can step in there and be a big factor in their offense I think the tough thing is is you know can he take over the role as a number one wide receiver he, he at times played that role for Texas uh, but he kind of shared it with A.D. Mitchell. I think if you look at his frame, you look at his overall speed, 40-yard time, probably would make more sense. If I could redo your mock for you, I'd probably <laughs> I'd probably switch these two picks. I think A.D. Mitchell makes more sense in Arizona and trying to be that number one ex-isolated wide receiver where then Xavier Worthy, even though they've got Hollywood Brown, you still could add some more speed where you don't have to have to be that, that isolated one-on-one -on -one wide receiver on the backside. That's Rishi Rice, in my opinion, right now on the Chiefs. So I think A.D. Mitchell would be a better fit for what Arizona's looking for. Mar Marquise Brown, you know, he's on a one -year I get deal. he's on a one-year deal, but uh, I think if he plays really well, they'll do everything they can to try and keep him. Though. Hollywood. Boomer Hollywood. Sooner. I got to throw in a Boomer Sooner for talking about Texas guys. Uh, Pick 6 podcast, Pete, as we put up the promo for this, they did an NFL jersey March Madness bracket. Give us your four one seeds for jerseys in the NFL. Current jerseys or yeah. all-time uh, Sure, all-time. Or the all Chargers time. powder blue is number one. Okay. What? Number one. That's number one? Number one. You have three to go through. Uh, you can't stay on this too long. Uh, I like the creamsicle from the Tampa Bay Bucks. Okay. There you Bucks. go, producer Jack. I, I like the old Oilers. Jack is taking the producer. No, I'm trying to get him out of my head. Yeah, I'm the Oilers to have to be a one. Oh, wait, one of them has to be the Seattle Seahawks. The, 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 old, the old school? The old Seahawks, Seahawks jersey. Old Seahawks. Yes. Absolutely. The old Seahawks jersey. Over Eagles, Kelly Green. You know what? People are going to disagree with me on this one, but I like the old white Cardinals jerseys. Those are cool. I like those. Okay, well, that was six, but that's fine. We'll go with that. You didn't give me much time to do my seeding. You just threw them out. There. I didn't this even think is, about this it. This is the point. Yeah. This is the point. Pick Six Podcast, everything you need to know about the NFL. Make sure to download and follow or you can watch it.